and welcome to another screencast where this time we'll be discussing uh, the stomach, the some of the uh, gross and microanatomy of the stomach as well as the, the physiology of the stomach. So um, by the end of this you should be able to identify and describe here the specialized regions, tissues, and cells of the stomach. Uh, describe uh, the gross and microscopic, microscopic anatomy of the stomach. Describe here and explain the mechanism of mechanical digestion as well as the composition and the functions of the gastric juice and chyme, and uh, be able to discuss, explain here a little bit about the chemical digestion of proteins. I think I'll deal with this uh, regulation of digestion in a separate uh, screencast just to keep this a little bit shorter. So let's get started. So here we are with the uh, entire digestive system. We've already dealt with sort of what's going on here in another screencast with the, uh, the mouth and the, the oral cavity. Uh, and then the propulsion of food, the, the food bolts down the uh, esophagus here, and now we'll be focusing on what's happening here in the stomach region. Now, uh, here's the stomach. It's, it's sort of sometimes described as the J-shaped organ. Uh, it is essentially a, um, a curvature. There's this lesser curvature, and, and then the, the greater curvature around the um, uh, left side and down around the, the inferior side of the stomach. Um, there is a, an outer covering, the serosa, the serous membrane, and the serosa as it is here is the uh, visceral peritoneum. Visceral peritoneum. <clears throat> and again, that is a serous membrane that when that stomach is churning and moving, uh, the liquid there, that the, uh, the, the mucus that's produced by the, that serous membrane or that, sorry, rather the secretion that's produced by that ser uh, serous membrane helps the stomach glide past the other organs that are in the abdominal cavity there and against, against the, uh, the underside of the diaphragm. In the esophagus, there are two layers of smooth muscle. So here we see the esophagus coming down, uh, joining the stomach here at what is the, uh, known as the e e lower esophageal sphincter. Uh, this is sometimes also known as the cardiac sphincter because it is located near the heart. So in some text, you'll hear it described as the cardiac sphincter. And again, the sphincter is a uh, muscle layer that acts as a valve to close off uh, the, the lumen of the stomach from the lumen of the um, esophagus there. Um, there are, so I said that there are two layers of, of smooth muscle here in the esophagus, but in the stomach there are three layers here in this muscularis layer. There's a longitudinal layer uh, uh, that is on the outside. The fibers are running parallel this way to the, uh, the long axis. Then there's a circular muscular layer, and those uh, fibers run around the, the, uh, the, the girth of the stomach. And then you have the oblique muscle layers here. And again, oblique means at an angle. And you see that these fibers are moving at an angle here. So these three different angles of contraction uh, enable that stomach to produce a, a grinding, pounding motion uh, that is going to pummel the food into smaller, smaller, and smaller uh, bits mechanically and, and produce uh, peristaltic waves that will, uh, again, move that food that's in the lumen, that bolus that's in the lumen back and forth uh, here to sort of mix it up. At the distal end of the stomach, there's another sphincter, the pyloric sphincter, right? and then there's this area of the uh, stomach here, uh, just before that pyloric sphincter, called the uh, pylorus, right? and this is where most of that chemical digestion is going to, going to take place before uh, the um, uh, contents of the stomach are moved into here the duodenum or the first part of that small intestine. Right? One more feature we'll point out here that on the gross anatomy of the stomach it is uh, you can see the the folds here and these are the rugae and these are gross gross anatomical folds when the stomach is not distended. Uh, when food enters the stomach the stomach can greatly distend right? and distend means that it stretches stretches out right so after big thanksgiving dinner right you've got that food baby in your stomach there. that's because that stomach is probably completely distended after you shoved all that food down there um so let's take a look now at the microscopic anatomy of the stomach right here we'll look at the wall of this and go look here because this is going to be uh, help us out with the physiology of the stomach so we took a little section there let's go outside to in again uh first we see a serous membrane here uh, which again is a simple squamous epithelium with this connective tissue layer. So this is the uh, visceral peritoneum right here. 
then you have your three muscularis layers, again, your longitudinal, um, your circular, and your oblique layers. And then there is a submucosa, which again is uh, connective tissue, uh, and it's highly vascularized as you see the blood vessels here in red and, and blue. And then we have the uh, mucosa or the mucous membrane. And this mucous membrane is going to have specialized cells that are going to secrete. So let's take a look over here at this mucous membrane. We sometimes refer to this as gastric glands. So these glands uh, are something as a gland because it is going to be producing secretions. Right. And there are several different types of secretions here. Um, if we look at the microscopic anatomy of the surface here, we see these gastric pits, and these pits are the openings, or essentially would be a, the duct, uh, by which the secretions are going to be released into the lumen. So the white space up here would be the lumen of the stomach. And again, these pits are microscopic, not the rugae. Right? Um, the first cells that we'll encounter as we move down one of these pits are these surface mucus cells, right? and these are the cells that are going to be secreting the mucus. Right? And this mucus is typically thick, and it is uh, there's a lot of it that's produced here. Um, as we move down, so these are the ones that are on the surface. As we move down, we have mucus neck cells here that are also helping to produce mucus, and that mucus is going to uh, then be propelled out of the duct. Uh, and as we get down to the, uh, the base of, of these ducts here, we're going to see uh, several different types of cells. We see uh, number one, parietal cells, number two, chief cells, and number three, uh, endocrine cells here. So really, it's actually like four, four types of cells. So the fourth one here, of course, being the mucus cells. So let's come over on the diagram on the right here and look at these parietal cells. So here we have a cartoon of a parietal cell. And if we see, there's one over here as well. So this is a parietal cell over on this side. And the parietal cells are secreting uh, hydrochloric acid. And that hydrochloric acid has a pH, will make the pH contents of the stomach around 2. So that is an extremely low uh, pH. Next to the parietal cells, you have uh, chief cells. So again, these parietal cells are secreting hydrochloric acid. Uh, we have chief cells then, and if you look here, here's a chief cell. Uh, that is secreting uh, this substance that's called pepsinogen, and this is an inactive enzyme. Sometimes also referred to as a proenzyme. And so this proenzyme, this inactive enzyme, pepsinogen, uh, will be converted in the presence of hydrochloric acid right here into pepsin and this is an active enzyme that will begin the breakdown of uh, proteins into uh, larger uh, polypeptides larger polypeptides or just peptides and so these are uh, this begins the first chemical digestion here that's happening in the stomach. So this is the key enzyme, uh, pepsinogen, sorry, proenzyme, pepsinogen converted in the presence of hydrochloric acid into pepsin. Right? Um, the, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. And then lastly, here are these third cells down here, these enteroendocrine cells here will be secreting not into the duct. Here you see the secretions of the parietal cells, the parietal cells and the chief cells into the duct. But these endoendocrine cells are going to be secreting their contents, since they are endocrine, into the bloodstream. Okay. And so you notice here that the, ento, en, the endocrine cells are sort of at the base of these ducts here. And then there are blood vessels generally associated with those pretty closely. And so you have these capillaries, these blood vessels, and blood's traveling this way. And what gets uh, secreted by these endocrine cells are hormones. Okay? And the chief hormone secreted um, by these endocrine cells is a hormone called gastrin. Okay? Now gastrin is going to travel in the bloodstream uh, and have, other, have effects on the stomach, which I'll discuss again, like I said, in another screencast. So, um, might be a good idea to pause here and just review this microscopic anatomy as well as that gross anatomy of the stomach. And you're thinking all along here about how this is more of a functional anatomy, right? So what do these cells, what are these cells uh, secreting here and how is this um, aiding in digestion? How is this representative of the digestive system?
Okay, so good idea to pause here. All right. Uh, so as a go back and just take a look at that pepsinogen again for a second. Let me just scroll back here. So here's this uh, pepsinogen and the hydrochloric acid and the pepsin being produced. Um, Actually, let's talk about this hydrochloric acid for a second. There's so much hydrochloric acid produced, you're thinking, like, wait a second, this acid, won't it um, damage, the, damage the, the, the cells themselves here? And the answer is no, because this is what this thick mucus is all about. So the mucus uh, helps to protect the stomach cells, the cells of the stomach lining. It protects the stomach cells from this hydrochloric acid here. So if you are overproducing acid and underproducing the mucus, what might happen is you might actually uh, bore a hole, right? So you might actually, uh, the acid might dissolve a lot of these cells through this mucous membrane here, get down into the submucosa, right? And then could even eventually uh, bore a hole, right? That acid make a hole all the way through this muscularis layer and then into the, out through the serosa right here. And in which case then you'd have stomach contents moving through this right, hole here. And this hole it could be is in one way called a fistula, right? but more commonly it is referred to as an ulcer. Right? So an ulcer uh, could be a dangerous thing right, for you. So if you are uh, overproducing this acid, underproducing this mucus for whatever reason, you might be more susceptible to ulcers. Stress uh, has a way of triggering uh, this, this, uh, this reaction right here in some people, right? So this may hear some people getting a stomach ulcer, and this is what is going on there. But typically, that mucus is going to be protecting uh, the, the, the stomach cells. So all of this together, this mucus, this uh, hydrochloric acid, this pepsinogen right up there, all of this is referred to as gastric juice. Right? And so this gastric juice, um, about on any given day about two to three liters of that is produced on any sort of normal given day right? um, back to the uh, the protein digestion here this is what we see in this first part of this diagram that we'll be taking a look at uh, throughout the course here so throughout the course of study of this so here's our pepsin right, produced by the stomach glands specifically um, the uh, chief cells of the stomach here and again, it was pepsinogen turned into pepsin. And in the presence of hydrochloric acid, that's what we get. And so we see here that proteins are broken down into larger polypeptides there. And this is the first step of, of protein digestion. Um, another enzyme that is not on the slideshow here, but renin is an enzyme that's produced in uh, infants. And this will help uh, to digest some of the milk protein, milk protein. Uh, breakdown. So renin, just another enzyme. As we get to be adults, uh, we produce a less and less of this renin enzyme, but as infants, we produce a whole heck of a lot of it. So infants that are nursing from their mother um, produce this and it helps to break down the milk, milk protein there. Okay. Um, so the mixing of the contents here, the peristaltic action, mixing the chyme here, here's, this is what we now call this. So after that gastric juice begins to digest uh, the food bolts that came down in here, this is uh, chyme, and this is sometimes referred to as an acid chyme. Again, the pH here is around 2. The stomach, the distension of the stomach will trigger this peristaltic wave-like motion. So you squeeze down here to this pyloric end, right, and then will be shoveled back up into this way and then shuttled back down here and so you get this mixing this churning um, when the pyloric end here becomes full we see that uh, each time we get this rhythmic contraction here we get about 30 mls squeezed into this pylorus here uh, sorry into the pyloric end and about 30 mls of that um, oops wrong label there so about 30 mls right there and into the duodenum right there uh, is somewhere <coughs> somewhere around uh, 3 mLs. And so each time the stomach is churning and contracting, you're squeezing a little bit of that acid chyme into the duodenum, which is then going to um, uh, trigger the, the small intestine to do its thing. Okay. All right, so uh, let me stop here. We'll talk about these this control in another screencast. So you should be able to have down here the specialized regions, the tissues, and the cells of the stomach. 
a little bit about the gross anatomy and the microscopic anatomy. Um, lastly, there I handled that just the mechanical digestion, that pyloric end, and then discussing here the compositions and functions of the gastric juice and the chyme, and a little bit about the chemical digestion of proteins, and again, I'll deal with this in a separate screencast. Thanks for listening.